up, everybody? It is Wednesday, July 26, 2017. This is Ready Tokyo. And, yeah, we were supposed to do shows last week, and we didn't. We were supposed to do Monday, and we didn't. And kind of feel bad for it, because it was Comic-Con weekend, and some things happened. And there was some things that happened last week. Um, so, yeah, this is our Comic-Con catch-up. Three days after Comic-Con ended. Yay! Hi, Nick. How are you? I'm, I'm excited for things, and I I really need to rant. If, if these rumors that I heard are true, to yell at DC, I don't... Um, it, okay, wait, okay. I have to preface this by saying, and Nick, I was telling you this, like, right before we started, um, there were, um, some things I want to talk about, uh, relating to Doctor Who, because we're getting a new Doctor. For those of you who don't know, we're getting a new Doctor. It's going to be amazing. It's going to be wonderful. Um, the chick, uh, first ever Doctor not to have a penis. So, what are we going to do? Oh, no, we're going to freak out. Oh, man, no, 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 no. Fuck you. Okay, just fuck off if you're one of the people who's concerned about having a new female Doctor. And this includes everyone up to Stephen Moffat and uh, every other man who's played a Doctor or been on the show who had something to say about it, because if that, I believe it was the fifth Doctor uh, who said uh, that his only concern is that there's no longer going to be a strong role model for young men. Fuck you, okay? I mean, we're it's who, who gives a shit? Really, who gives a shit? Why is this a concern? Why is there such a negative reaction to having a woman portraying a Doctor when women can be doctors in real life, I I just don't understand where this argument even comes from anymore. How will we control the time streams without a penis? How will we control the time stream when she can't control? You know, I'm not. I'm not. I am not. For once, I am not going to finish making a joke about something. Because the reaction to it is already a joke, considering the fact that some people are responding, Well, this is the first female character in a Sly of Fire series. No, it's not. No. No, it's not. It's not. Look at Star Trek Voyager. Look at Alien franchise. Look at a lot of things. Okay? Get over it. Enjoy the program for what it is. Shut the hell up. Move on with your life. You know it's really sad when I have to agree with Jonathan on everything he said. I mean, like, there's, there's no, there's, there's no real argument with this. I mean, that was, and see, that was stupid bullshit last week. Stupid bullshit this week. We're, we're, we're three days into this week. Four. I'm sorry, cut Sunday. But, you know, we're just a couple of days in this week. And there's already been even more fallout. And I'm going to start with the one from today. And then I'm gonna go back to Comic Con because I because I really don't want to focus on stupid bullshit today. But anyway, I, I mean we're focusing on stupid bullshit anyway. Whatever. <sighs> Deep breath. Okay. Um, of course today we had more stupidity come out of the White House because the President has decided that no transgender individuals people serve the military. And I want to say something about this really quick. Okay. I don't give a fuck. I really don't give a fuck if someone has a dick, has a vagina, has both. I don't care if they wear dresses. I don't give a shit if they have tattoos. I don't give a shit if they smoke marijuana. Whatever. If they want to pick up a gun and fight for the country, go for it. Just go. Let them go. Who gives a shit? Uh, and, like, what bothers me is people are saying, well, we can't allow it in America. Our military is better than this. Look at Israel. Uh, you know, our number one favorite country in the world. Look at Israel. Uh, they actively encourage LGBTQ community members to serve the military. Uh, they're in favor of it. They treat them well, including people who are transgender, because they cover uh, all medication and all surgery and everything else. And, like, there's one thing that's bothering me about this. People are saying, well, uh, we, we take good care of our veterans here. We do this and we do that for them. No, we don't. Because there was, the was a vote lie. yesterday. There, there, yeah, it is a lie. There, there was a vote yesterday where the House voted down two billion dollars to being added to the military budget to pay for veterans. So fuck the fuck off, 
with this nonsense that we take care of people in our military uh, because we waste $120 million a year on new tanks that we don't need, uh, $41 uh, million on Viagra, but we can't possibly spend no more than $15 million to help the not even four, uh, like 0.04% of the military that's going to be transgender because they're terrible people and uh, they might break down in combat and cry. Elmo motherfucking Pops Haney. Now, his name is not that. It's actually Elmo Haney. Was a gunnery sergeant United States Marine Corps who broke down during the Battle of Peleliu in World War II. You might have heard of Peleliu. It's in the Pacific. It happened to be the place where the Japanese were the most entrenched, you know, for all their forces. And, you know, like as, as hard a time as uh, American troops had on Okinawa or on Iwo Jima, they had a much harder time at Peleliu. And one, and one of the, you know, oldest Marines currently serving at that time was El Mohaney, uh, and he broke down and cried. Uh, Stonewall Jackson broke down and cried during the Chancellorsville campaign. Uh, it's, it's, it's not some foreign concept that someone might have some sort of emotional disturbance in combat and break down and cry. I mean, as much as I am a, an opponent of, uh, of uh, Chris Kyle... And everything that he did, because I, I I don't agree with him, he was killed by someone who had an emotional breakdown because of combat stress. So please, fuck right off with that nonsense. It is as dumb to say that we cannot allow someone in the military because because they're transgender as it is to say we can't have a female doctor because what are we going to do? Think of the mess. How's the TARDIS going to function when the doctor has your period? The TARDIS is female. Your argument is entirely goddamn irrelevant to any possible situation. Grow the fuck up. Move on to new things. Find something else to complain about. Who gives a good goddamn if not even a tenth of a percent of the population of the United States is transgender? Who gives a shit? Let them serve the military. It's fine. Well, I mean, we've had an issue lately where recruitment's been down. No one's volunteering. Holy fuck, if we get into a war with China or North Korea or Russia or the entire world or Mars, we're probably going to have to draft people. Are we going to exclude them? I don't know, but I'm willing to bet you no, we're not. Because it's kind of fucked up that this has been a recurring issue. And I... I don't. I, I didn't want to get into this, but I want to point out something very, very relevant here, okay? A lot of the arguments being made about this are the exact same arguments that were made against using black soldiers in the Civil War. Like, even the 1st Union Regiment, the 1st Kansas Colored Infantry, uh, was told that they were not to be used for anything more than manual labor, and that was in August of 1862. Fast forward to October of 1862, and they're the first black regiment in, in, the, in U.S. history to interactive combat. But they had to do exactly. it under white officers, and they had to do it with receiving half the pay of their white counterparts because they were black and they were viewed as inferior. That shit went on until the fucking Vietnam War. That was the mindset of our military from the Civil War, actually from the Revolutionary War, because they were separate then, too. Uh, what, and keep in mind, by separate, I mean the few blacks who fought. They were not actually segregated, uh, but they weren't actively wanted to fight. For, you know, it's, it's kind of a racist thing, a really, really racist thing. But anyway, um, basically every unit military history that was black was, all, was segregated. They were kept apart. They weren't allowed to be equal until the Vietnam War. So our country was a country for nearly 200 years before we fixed that little fucking problem. And uh, we've had... Uh, don't ask, don't tell. We've done all these. We, we repealed that. We've had all these problems in the military. Uh, people who um, are different, but they're willing to fight for us. And there's always this argument that, well, we can't allow that because of whatever reason. And literally today I had someone tell me uh, that uh, we don't need to allow, and I'm going to quote them, we don't need to allow those fucking trannies in the military uh, because we don't let people with tattoos in, because the military is about effectiveness. If someone has a tattoo and they're capable of fighting, that's awesome. If they don't and they're capable of fighting, that's awesome. I don't give a shit. Quit making stupid arguments about someone's gender being a reason that they can or cannot do something just like with the doctor. Move.
move on, which is what we're going to do. Deep breath. <sighs> also, there's a great movie about uh, the, the colored regiment. Uh, glory. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, look at Glory. Just go watch the movie Glory. And um, keep in mind, what you see in there is actually highly toned down from the way it was in real life. Now, granted, Glory has some problems in it. Um, Obviously. Primarily being it's not entirely factually correct. And it, it actually does make up people that didn't exist. But when, the, but when you get to uh, the assault on Battery Wagner, um, that's true. They were not exactly asked to be the first one in the assault. They volunteered, they, and they were not the first unit, but um, they did request the, the ones to be, to be the first ones to actually assault the fortress itself rather than, you know, try and clear the way up to it. Um, this was after having saved the day at the Battle of Velocity in Florida because the 54th Massachusetts kind of did some things, but even in the in between, they were still treated as nothing more than foragers and laborers because fuck them, they're black. And it's bullshit. It's literal bullshit that uh, people talk about how great America is and we have all this equality here and everything like that, but oh no, we just can't let a transgender person fight for us. Oh, that's the, we, we, we can't let a black person fight for us, or an Asian, or uh, one of the, the more, most interesting ones is um, the Mexican War concern of having Irish people fight for you. We can't have the Irish fighting for us, even though Irish people were actually segregated into their own battalions and units and made up a rather large majority of the military because, as I've discussed before on the show, the Irish were coming here in droves because their own country and their own government was fucking them over. So they came here, and a lot of them came here, got military experience, went back home and tried to overthrow England. Didn't work out. Whatever. Who gives a shit? Who gives a shit? They were willing to fight at that time. They're willing to fight now. Move on away from the arguments that you say, well, we can't allow someone to do that. And just, just because I want to say this, this one final thing. If, if, if you think that what I'm saying is going to destroy the country and you think that um i am uh one of the people that's just kept you know, like one of those not my president people no you're wrong donald trump is president i acknowledge he's a president i will support him as being president i don't agree with what he says and what he does that's not destroying the country to me that's being literally patriotic and the flag waving bullshit and calling me names and everything on the internet or anyone else on the, inter on the internet names and being insulting and not actually making an actual valid reason, you know, a statement to what, you know, got a response to what you're saying or what I'm saying. Um, that's not patriotism. So, yeah. Anyway, where, where, where were we going with this show today, Nick? And about DC, also, I'm the one that's uh, clearly destroying the country, not you. Yes, it's true. Um. Okay, so Comic Con happened, and there were lots of exciting things, but lots of things to get hyped about. Do you want to start off with my biggest complaint first, or to go go over the exciting things first? Well, okay. Here's the thing. This is going to be slightly spoilerific from now on, um, and I know this because I, because Nick wants to complain about Justice League. I actually want to complain about Infinity War. There's some there's some concerns I have with this. Um, wait, 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 wait. what? I, I totally get that. Okay, uh. anyway, but but first, okay, tell you what, you go ahead and start off with Justice League because. Even I, as a DC fan, have got problems with it. So, what, what, wherever you want to start, have at it. You have the floor. Where do I start? Um, first, I actually really like... No, no, wait, wait. 
I had problems with the trailer from the very beginning. Starts off. Where they're like. Beacon. And of hope. The best in people. And. They've been complaining about. For the longest time. About the DC movie. Specifically Superman. It's been my number one thing that has pissed me off about Superman. Huh? What? Number one complaint about Superman? Uh, that he is an immigrant? They, they, they start off the DC trailer with talking about how Superman is a beacon for people. That he showed the best of people. Oh, okay. You mean the whole thing where um, Batman is now all of a sudden championing the person that in their previous meeting kept punching in the face because uh, he was a foreigner and he doesn't belong here and there might be a 1% chance that he's a threat and we have to take him out because he's a threat and then all of a sudden, oh, we have the same mother's name. We have to be best friends. Yeah. Uh, that's actually one of my problems with this because that's just fucking shoehorned in the like it's, it's it's you know what we we gotta make them fight for some arbitrary reason and you know I totally understand I've defended it before I'm sure I will again I I understand the need to you know to have that conflict there because we can't have a superhero movie talking about you Civil War where um, superheroes you know, don't fight one another. So I, I, I completely understand that you have to give them, you know, some kind of uh, reason for not wanting to work together. And it just happens to be the reason that we're not supposed to allow Muslims in the country or Mexicans or transgenders or Canadian or whatever. It's, 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 a, it's, a, it's a stupid reason. Whatever. Anyway, um... Yeah, is, is that what you're talking about? Yes, yeah, yeah that, that's exactly what I'm talking about because because it gets worse. When in the DC movies have we seen Superman be a beacon for people? He inspired well, hope. You did have the montage where he was rescuing people, and then there was the thing at the party where he saw on the news that there was a house fire, which I, god damn it, I am sorry. I am so sorry. That, that's, it's, it's not, actually it is Deus Ex Machina in a way. Um, it's, 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 I don't know why, um, conveniently, by the way, on, uh, Dia de los Muertos, there would be a fire in Mexico that would be on the news, in Metropolis, or Gotham, wherever the hell that was supposed to be, it was Metropolis, but anyway, whatever, I, I, I don't know why that would be on the news, um, then again, you know, we just had the, the fire in London that was on the news, but that, that was a lot of people, this was, you know, an apartment building where no one was currently at except for, like, one little girl, and they were worried that she was going to burn to death, and I, I don't know how that would become international news, because that happens every day, you know, like, like, there's a house fire pretty often, and people burn to death pretty often, so, like, I mean, I, I, I don't know how, um, that would warrant being on the news, but anyway, you know, there, I... there was that scene where Superman sees this, 
And you know it's dumb. Like, I mean, it, it's not just dumb as a plot device. You know it's dumb even in the context of the movie because he looks at this and he's like, well, obviously here's Batman. Batman's viewed as a criminal. And then you got Wonder Woman. And I know Lex Luthor's up to some shit, but oh my goodness, there's the news broadcast in Spanish. It was in fucking Spanish. Because Lex Luthor hired Mexicans to work in his kitchen. Let the racism sink in for a moment. <laughs> anyway, uh, <laughs> Superman sees this. <laughs> and he somehow understands what's being said. Which is but, interesting but... because that means that Superman, I guess, can speak every language on Earth. Which is cool. Like That's legitimately awesome. That he do, that he can do that, but I, I mean, don't know if that's actually a power now for him. Did, did they just give him that power? Well, it's 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 it, it has to be. It literally has to be because when you think about it, he's watching a news broadcast from Mexico in Spanish, and you know, hearkening back to you know the thing from the Christopher Nolan movies where Batman has the jurisdiction. Superman sure as fuck ain't got no jurisdiction because he goes to Mexico. Saves little girl, and then just turns, just tur oh god, it, it's so bad. He, he he just turns and watches the building burn. There there, they, <laughs> and, and and the greatest thing is the people there, you know, rather than you know running away from this godlike being who has just descended from the clouds. By clouds, I mean s smoke, uh, carrying a child, you know, and whatever, and like are 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 clearly not evacuating. They they, they just reach out their hands and you know it's like we want to touch you you're you're our savior no it's it's i mean god damn it okay the jesus allegory metaphor thing whatever you want to call it with superman is so heavy-handed in donald justice uh to the point that you literally see him coming down from the heavens with his arms held out not once but twice you see it twice in the movie. And then they do uh, it in, like, in like, Man of Steel, too. What's that? Two. One more Man time. Man of Steel. Pose again. It's, it's, it, uh, it's, it's, it's just stupid to me. I mean, it's stupid. I mean, uh, like... Okay, I totally get it when he does it when he's fighting Batman. That's fine. I can live with that one. But, but the one that really bothers me is, again, in the same fucking montage of Superman doing all these heroic things, you know, where they, they even got Neil deGrasse Tyson in this. Come on, man. They got, anyway, um, but it's in the same montage there. Like, that same little set of clips showing Superman. He's really helping people, even though the federal government is like, we're going to track you everywhere he goes. You know, we're going to follow you. We know what you're doing and everything. And it is so blatantly obvious he's Clark Kent in this. It's like it kind of destroys the concept of an identity, of hidden identity, whatever. Anyway, <sighs> goose trouble. Um, what I was saying is, like, what the, the one that gets me is the moment where he is shown hovering uh, over the house because it's flooding and... I mean, like, these homes, which are entirely too close together, in the middle of nowhere, the water is up to the roofs of the house. And th this is at least a one-story house, so you're talking, you know, 10 to 12 feet of water, which is, which, 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 which is fine. That can happen. But they're on the roof of their house, and somehow, somehow, they have gotten paint, and they painted, you know, like, the House of L symbol symbol on their roof and i'm just wondering what would happen if superman was on the opposite side of the house because no one else has got this it's just on this one roof and conveniently it happens to be the direction he's at and he's coming out of the sun so you're saying that superman is coming with the sun behind him and he sees the house of elsel boy symbol and he descends from heaven and he's like oh i'm here to save you now for charters 
Um, actually, there's there's really nothing to start with. That's it's fucking stupid. It's stupid. It's stupid, 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 stupid. And I'm sorry, Wait. but as much Wait. as I like Dawn of Justice, and I will happily defend this movie, it's dumb. It's dumb. It's really dumb. Here's the beautiful thing. That's only the start of the stupidity. We, we've we've already seen clearly that Superman's few examples of being a beacon to the world are terrible. You want to know what what the rumors are about what's going to happen with him in Dawn of Justice, or not Dawn of Justice, but uh, Justice League? Does he become Electric Superman? I, is that what Evil Superman's called? I can't. I can't remember. It's been so long. Well, no. See, like, I kind of wish he wouldn't do the Evil Superman thing because that's. It's that's no, no. He has he has really the black different. suit. He has the black suit. Okay, so we're just okay. Look, as many problems as I have with the MCU, and God knows. Hold, hold up, let me explain this. I, 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 let me no, let me explain. I'm gonna this. get to this. The fact that DC is like, look, here's all of our stories. We're going to crunch everything together in two movies. Give us your money. <laughs> no, that, no. Come on, DC. Just don't make him evil. Please don't do the electric Superman to where he's an energy being. Uh, please don't have child Superman. Um, please don't do steel. I mean, I, I, I like Steel. Steel's an awesome character. But <laughs> just, god damn it. God damn it. Like, I want to like this movie. I really want to like... I, I, I'm actually excited for it. I really am. I really want to see this. Because, you know... Well, hold on. Let, let me ruin this more for you. Let me ruin this more for you. Is that possible? It's definitely possible. I don't know, because we're supposed to be getting the Green Lantern at some point in time. And, oh, I I will say that. I will say that. Okay. So, basically what happens is Steppenwolf goes rogue against Darkseid, resurrects Superman, and Batman did not save Lois Lane and instead saved himself, which causes Superman to become evil, and he's evil for, like, for the movie or something. They save, or save Superman? <laughs> that has got to be the dumbest. It, okay. I sincerely hope that that is just a rumor. I, I, I really just hope that it's something that someone made up and that is not I, I, what I know why it's real. I know why it's real. Because the Flash goes back in time, gets Lois, brings him to Superman to show him that Lois is alive. They, they remembered, remember the scene of the Flash visiting... Batman, and he's like, Lois is the key. I'm gonna come to your house, and I'm gonna kick you in the face, if that's what happens. I just, I just, I just want that to be an announcement. I'm gonna come kick you in the face, if that's what happens, because, j god damn it, just, god damn it. God damn it. <sighs> okay. Only that, but we have three origin stories going on in the movie at the same time, or four. I, 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 I'm not sure. It's 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 technically three, and here's the thing that bothers me, because in the trailer, which um, by the way, we'll be showing it right now, just while we're talking about it. But I think we've mentioned before that uh, got a copyright strike for doing that. So we're not going to be doing that until next month, which, by the way, 
I'm 99% certain that we're going to be doing that from now on because whatever. Anyway, um, my thing is, in the trailer, if you watch specifically the end of it where you see Alfred, uh, you see what looks to be a, 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 a green light and it reflecting his glasses and there's also a green hue that shows up on everything and then he does that you know vaguely ominous thing he said you would come now like that that's as close as i can get to jeremy irons but um supposedly everyone thinks that this might be a green lantern showing up which is fucking convenient because steppenwolf i'm assuming it's steppenwolf I'm assuming I, that's who it is that's, that's doing the voiceover, where he says that there are no lanterns and no Kryptonians. But it, but I mean, it, it it would make sense to get a Green Lantern because if you recall, the original tagline from the movie was "Unite the Seven, and we're only going to get six members, of, five members of the league because Superman's total, Soup's is totes dead, yo. Superman is like totally dead. No, uh, we're supposed to be getting seven because the Justice League has always had a core group of seven people, and that core group, with a maybe a couple of exceptions, has almost always been Flash, Superman, maybe Cyborg, or maybe Green Arrow, but, but Wonder Woman, Batman, uh, uh, Aquaman, and the Green Lantern. Now, sometimes it's you know, like like it, it it tends to alternate between uh, Cyborg and Green Arrow, but it's also possibly Martian Manhunter, and God damn it, I am telling you right now, I will come all over myself if there is a Martian Manhunter in this movie. That would be the most legitimately badass thing DC could do, and it would right every single wrong that DC has got going on in their movies. Okay, that would be I don't, amazing. I, Martian Manhunter would win that movie. And here's the thing. There are two actors in the credits on IMDb right now who don't have their roles specified. It's entirely possible that we could be getting Manhunter or the Green Lantern. But but here's the thing. The, the reason people think it's really the Lantern is because not just that scene with Alfred, but there's a scene where you see the flying fox like after Cyborg has taken it over and it's flying around. There is a green light that's kind of zipping underneath it for a second. I I I think that would be cool. I mean, I realize that DC is just throwing everything at fans as possible, and it's, I'm okay with that. But I just I want a fucking Martian Manhunter movie, dude. I want Manhunter, and I want a better Green Lantern, and I do not, I do not want any other lantern other than John Stewart. I'm, I'm sorry. I want to see John Stewart as the lantern. I want that now. I want it yesterday and I want it tomorrow. Manhunter and John Stewart's lantern or I will riot. I completely agree with you on that. And um it it also it leads me to my other complaint, which is Is it just me or does Cyborg look terrible? I am iffy about it, Cyborg. Well, I mean well, I I like the way he looks and he looks number one. Like I'm o I'm okay with it. Except that Sometimes he looks bad. Like it, it. It really depends on the way he's being shown. But it's if an obvious CGI character is all we have to put up with. That's bad about this. I'm fine now. I, now that's wishful thinking. That's very, very, very wishful thinking here. Um, if that's all we have to put up with, I'm okay with it. Uh, because I, I'm sorry, I, I don't want evil Superman, and if we're gonna get evil Superman right off the bat, no, DC, what, what are you doing? What are you doing, buddy? What are you doing? Um, if we don't get Manhunter or Lantern, I'm gonna be upset. There's, like, 
it, it's very hard to be a fan of DC and realize that um this movie is <laughs> it's shouldering the burden of my fandom for DC right now and I, I I really don't even want to say that and have to admit that that's what's going on but uh, DC you're you're kind of losing me here it well okay but my, my complaint with Cyborg isn't just that he looks like a terrible, terrible CGI character. I mean, look at Planet of the Apes. Planet of the Apes CGI is amazing. How did, how did this happen? Number two, he sounds bored. Listen well, out of fairness, he's a robot. He's the cyborg, and on the iteration of cyborg that I've ever seen, he's been you know jokestery, happy. He he makes you know, even when he's super serious, he it, it seems like he's having fun. Looks bored. He sounds. Bored. I mean, because it's a dark and gritty reboot. Well, Superman in the in the third movie, technically the fourth movie. Do you know who the only character I have literally no issue with so far? Aquaman. Well, yes and no, but um, like literally the only the only character that I've seen in the trailer who I will not bother to question because I'm 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 gonna question Aquaman. I'm sorry, I, I've got to. I, I'll say I'll do it later. Anyway, uh, the only person in the trailer. Who I love, like love, J.K. Simmons. Uh, who? J.K. Simmons. Commissioner Gordon. Sorry, I'm sorry. I'm just I'm, I'm just too traumatized by. You know what? I agree with you. He he looks he sounds like Commissioner Gordon. He looks he looks like Commissioner like, Gordon. Like it's like when I saw him, I thought is Batman the animated series all of a sudden real? Because God, damn I would have rather. Why didn't they make that? I I want the live action. No, but see, but see like my thing is my, my thing is as far as J.K. Simmons and com and comic movies go. There will never, and I legitimately mean never, be anyone else to portray J. Jonah Jameson as well or as accurately as J.K. Simmons. And without even having seen him in the... And I, don't get me wrong. I loved Gary Oldman as Gordon. I loved Ben McKenzie as Gordon. Uh, I loved Pat Hingle as Gordon. And I... Like, I, I just... I don't think there will be anyone else who will play Jim Gordon as well as J.K. Simmons. Like it's, 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 it's something that he does so well. Like just, just go back and as many problems as I had with the first three Spider-Man movies, he always owned his role. Like literally owned it. Like to the point that uh, Marvel is actually unsure. Of being able to put someone else in the role, that like that's not even a joke. Marvel has openly questioned this, and they, of course, have, like it's, it's been asked: are, are is J.K. Simmons going to be? You know, the reason I'm saying this is because uh, um, 
uh, the man who plays Thunderbolt Ross came back. I I'm sorry, I, I forgot his name. I'm sorry. Anyway, uh, he was brought back for Thunderbolt Ross, even though, well, they could have easily cast someone else, but no, they used the same person for that. Okay, uh, so even though most people do not consider uh, the uh, Incredible Hulk movie to be the first movie for in the MCU, it actually is because surprise. Um, uh, the same, you know, they, they have Iron Man in there. He shows up at the end of it, and uh, they have uh, the same person from, from Thunderbolt Ross. Anyway, um, I just some people are so good in their roles in these. Movies I mean, uh, that I just uh, I, I I I don't see recasting them. You know what I mean? The early comic book movies were terrible. They really had some great actors and great portrayals in them. It's really hard to replace some of those actors. Some of those, it, it'd be really hard to do. It, 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 it's basically, okay, this is the best example I can give you. Who the hell else could or would possibly ever portray Iron Man if not Robert Downey Jr. I can't think of anyone right now. It's it's almost literally impossible to do, I mean it's figuratively impossible I'll, I'll use the correct word it's figuratively impossible to imagine someone else playing Tony Stark or Iron Man because he fucking owns the role. He is so good mm -hmm. at it and like and, and I realize that J. Jonah Jameson is a secondary character, but in the overall story of Spider-Man, he's actually a, a very important character. And, like, it, it it just fills me with so much concern that they're going to have uh, J.J. in a role, and it's not going to be J.K. Simmons. And it, it really bothers me. Like, I, I just, I cannot think of anyone else who could do that so well. And you are right, for as terrible as these movies were in their own way, they did have some really great casting. Uh, it's, I mean, just go back and watch the movie and be like, oh, Thomas Hayden Church is the Sandman. And he's, he's, he's brilliant in that role. I loved him as that. And I, I just don't see other people filling those shoes anytime soon. Oh, yeah. I, I completely agree with you because I hate, I, I despise Spider-Man 3. Really great portrayal. One really great role from that movie. It was the Sandman. I, I really wish they had just focused on the Sandman, honestly. It was a much better movie. Um, and then you had, um, I just forgot his name. The man who played Doc Ock. That was perfect. That was perfect. And then, um... And then, it's I, I, literally... I it, it, uh, the, 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 the woman who played uh, Aunt May. Okay? Visually, it will... And, and, and mannerisms, she was spot on. Like, she's who I... She was she, she represented who I would expect Aunt May to be if, if Aunt May were a real person. But same time, same time, I gotta be honest, I like Marissa Tomei. I really, really like Marissa Tomei in the role. Oh, uh, who, who doesn't like Marissa Tomei? I mean, I don't, the, the, oh, I, mean I, I don't mean just in general. I mean, like, I really like her as May Parker. I really love it. Um, so I was really against the idea at first, but... Uh, it makes a lot more sense for him to have a younger aunt. It does. I mean, I realize it's possible that he can have an aunt who's in her... The, the funny thing is, is that Aunt May's age is never really given. At all. Like, it's kind always of... Thought, I've always thought she was his great aunt, but they never... We'll see. Okay, we'll see. Uh, Canonically, she's supposed to be... Uh, an aunt by marriage, like she married uh, Peter Parker's 
mom's brother or something like that. I don't know who is who like who is significantly older than uh, his parents, which, which, which is fine. I get that, but like it's consistently shown, you know, she's probably mid to late sixties, since then, somewhere, somewhere around. You know, between sixty and eighty, somewhere in there, and and, and, that, and that's fine. I'm okay with that. It's understandable, whatever. But Marissa Tomei is excellent as Aunt May, and with the way the MCU is set up, there is no one else I would want to be May, other than her, having seen her in the role. And slight spoiler warning: if you haven't seen the movie, at the end of it. Where it, where she actually discovers Peter is Spider-Man, or or is at least wearing a costume, her reaction sold it. I mean, like everything up to that, I'm kind of okay. It's kind of iffy, you know. But here's the thing: in the whole movie, uh, she is shown to be the one who helps Peter. She guides him. She pushes him. She has every single characteristic that you want in an Aunt May, and I'm fine with that. I'm fine with it. <sighs> Nick, can I talk about Infinity War? Um, I, I, I mean, I mean, seeing as we are on the topic of Spider-Man, can I talk about Infinity War? You, you, you do realize, of course, no matter what you say, I'm going to talk about it, right? Yeah, I said, I said, go for it. Okay. Um, okay. This was the big surprise reveal trailer at Comic-Con. You know, because every year there's always something, well, we don't want you to record it, and every year people record it, and it goes on the internet, kind of like the Warcraft trailer was the big reveal uh, a couple years ago, and then, you know, you have uh, just, just various things throughout the years that people have been asked to not uh, actually record, and they do it anyway, because fuck off. A uh, lot, lot like uh, I, I, I think last year's was Power Rangers. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, it, 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 that was it. Uh, but anyway, um, the Infinity War trailer was released. Now, uh, pretty much every copy of it that was online, that was fan recorded, has been taken down by now. I watched it. Um, it raised hairs on my arms and the back of my neck. Because, Jesus, H. Christ, it was beautiful. Now, granted, this was a fan recording, and I, I, and I know we're on Wednesday in the week, uh, but there's still a few days left, and I, I'm kind of wondering if uh, Marvel Studios or Disney is actually going to release it to the public for the weeks out. I, I don't know why they wouldn't, um, because this is, I mean... <sighs> How can I put this without saying have all the hype ever? Um, this is probably the probably blah, 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 Roger Hart probably the most anticipated movie in the MCU uh, as a whole. Uh, now, granted, it's it's being divided up into two parts, but as a whole, it's being filmed all in one go, and it will be the longest movie. It's also going to have the most characters, and it's going to be fucking amazing i'm all i like it's i realize it's like it's still a whole year away but it's going to be pretty goddamn awesome so I, uh, can, in the trailer well, in the, like what hey, wait, let, let, let me just step in for one second literally be the biggest comic book movie ever um the 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 next justice league movie won't be able to be as big as this because of the buildup of the MCU, because we've had so many years of MC movies, and they've all been leading to this one singular point. They are. I mean, it, I, I, as excited as I am for the Justice League movie, as genuinely excited as I am to see some of the characters first time on the big screen in live action. DC doesn't hold a candle to Marvel right now. I mean, just... Okay. Imagine you're in a room of people, 
and you're going to watch a movie trailer, and about every three to six seconds, people burst out cheering. That's what happened. And, 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 and the trailer for Infinity War is about three minutes long. So every six seconds or so, like like ten times a minute, people are cheering at shit on screen. That's unreal. Like I I can't recall of any other uh, trailer I've seen that had that level of reaction to it. I really can't. Um, oh, okay. How can I put this without spoiling every single thing about it? Um, for starters, this movie, uh, oh God, Nick, how do I get into this and not ruin the movie? Cause, because, because I realized, and, like, as far as I know, wait, have you seen the trailer? At least one fa fan recording of it, so yeah. I, I, I think we almost have to spoil it, I... Okay, it opens up with the Guardians of the Galaxy, and spoil just just fucking spoiler alert again. Okay, it opens up with the Guardians, and motherfucking Thor slams into their window like like the windshield, and from there on it just gets better. It gets so much better. Um. Now, of course, you know, we, we it's know. hilarious because it's like it's like he's a bug that hits hits the windshield. Yes, yes. See, here's the thing. Here's the thing. Within the context of the trailer, like like you get some little bit of backstory about why Thor is in the middle of the universe, slamming into a, a spaceship. Anyway, um, it's it's um, Ragnarok, it's, I think. Yes, yes. It is a direct follow up to. I mean, like we're talking. Time wise, probably a week after the end of Ragnarok, which was the other big Marvel reveal uh, at, at Comic Con. Uh, so you're going to have Thor coming out of Ragnarok, hitting a windshield on the spaceship and Guardians, and they pick him up, and he's like, Well, we got to go do this. And they run off to do hero shit, okay? Uh, God damn, it's so beautiful. Uh, Thanos himself actually comes to Earth. Thanos, not 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 some lieutenant of his. He actually shows up, and it's it, it it's a weird model of Thanos. I'll give him that. But he actually does have the Infinity Gauntlet. He's managed to get all the stones. You get to see him use it. <sighs> anyway, um, <coughs> excuse me. Um, they obviously bring in. Everyone else in the MCU for this. You know, of course, you have the Guardians. Uh, the Avengers come together. Captain America comes back. Uh, he's got a beard. Like, that's one of the greatest things ever. Captain America with a full-on beard and shaggy hair. But, like, he, he's still back. Um, all the events that are going to happen in Black Panther. Uh, those, if I'm not mistaken, actually precede Infinity War as well. So, Guardians 2... Ragnarok, um, uh, Black Panther, and I, I think that's everything else we're supposed to get between then and now. But anyway, uh, all of that is before Infinity War, and they're all brought together because basically Thor fights the Hulk in Ragnarok, and it's brilliant. Like it, 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 it's it, it as stupid as it sounds, it's brilliant. Um, but Spider Man shows up. Spider Man does. Whatever a spider can uh, in the movie, um, you do see multiple multiple Avengers and like there's people I know that I'm missing somewhere in here. It's it's not the like there was uh, there, there the is Guardians, Doctor Strange. The yes, Doctor Strange is in this. Um, he 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 gets mm -hmm. pulled into it. There's oh goddamn like. I almost want to say the uh, some of the X Men are brought into this, but I, I I really don't remember who's all in the trailer, and until Marvel actually releases the full thing, I doubt we will all that I'll be able to remember because I can't find it to, online to watch again. 
but Jesus Christ, it's 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 beautiful. It's it's beautiful, and it kind of sucks. We're gonna have to wait like a whole year between parts of the movie, but same time, I'm I I'm okay with it. I'm I mean, and I I've actually been struggling to find a single fault with the Infinity War storyline. And as much as I would like to find a fault with it, I, I really don't know if I can. Like, this is going to legitimately blow every DC movie out of the water. Like, it's... I, it's, it's, I, I, it, I would it, argue... In fact, it's going to blow its own uh, cinematic universe. Like, the Marvel movies are just going to pale in comparison to the shit. Because it's that good. It's literally that good. Like, this is going to be the biggest of biggest movies as far as comic book goes. And, uh, like... Even as far as to argue, it would be the biggest of biggest movies of all time in it's cinematic very history. Likely to do that. Yes, it's very, very likely to do that. Um, because... It's the, never I mean, been a build-up like this before. Never in any kind of... And say like what, what well, I can think of is there was a uh, uh, a cracked article the other day talking about how uh, Hollywood movies are like the, you know, the the summer blockbuster thing is doomed to destroy Hollywood, and I I I I, I would like to disagree, but one of the points they actually made was actually about Infinity War and about how expensive the movie is. And how well done it's going to be. And uh, because we basically live in a point in time right now where summer blockbusters start going to theaters in February. Um, it's very likely that there will be no other kind of movies made from now on other than these tentpole movies where uh, they just throw on the screen like whatever the hell it is they want you to see. And you go watch it, and you enjoy it, and you love it, and you spend your money on it. And as okay as I am with that, it's I, like that's where my actual complaint with the MCU comes in, and soon to be DC. I hate to say it, but soon to be DC. But it, it and I know I've said this before, especially about oh. Transformers, especially about Transformers. But that is my concern. We're going to start seeing these movies really often i mean we're already up to uh let's see we had this year alone we had power rangers um guardians wonder woman we're getting justice league before the end of the year uh i, f I forget what else and then 2018 is got a lot more there, there's a lot like, like it's gonna be to where i i if i'm not mistaken it's a m comic movie every month and a half or two months for all of 2018 which is a lot of movies so a lot like there's almost like there's some of them that are scheduled to release a week after other ones i mean like st studios have already planned out their release schedule all the way to 2019 or in the case of marvel 2025 uh so like you can see where these movies are going to be released and it's kind of scary in a way that that's what's going to happen with these movies is that we're going to oh. be seeing them so often and there's not going to be any time to really enjoy them because it's just going to be off to the next thing and the next thing and the next thing and like it's kind of it like i realize that that's cool in a lot of ways you know because it's fun to watch these movies but same time it also bothers me immensely because uh, what's going to happen when studios realize, hey, we're funneling money into this and all of a sudden we're losing money. Because that's, like, that's the inevitable thing. With all these competing movies, like all these franchises that are coming out, that's the inevitable thing. Is that eventually people are going to not see a movie because something else is going to... Like, like, for example, Warcraft. Now, uh, Warcraft... Uh, has been kind of questionable for a sequel uh, because of its performance here stateside. But in China and over in Europe, it did 
really, 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 really well. Uh, a lot better overseas than it did here. And the concern is that there are people in the United States who don't really want to see a second Warcraft movie. And I, I'm not, I'm not going to make their arguments for them, but I can understand why you wouldn't want to see one because it would be, you know, it, it, it would be a one-off movie and it didn't have to become a franchise. And that's great and wonderful. I'm okay with that. I understand that. But at the same time, I kind of want to see Warcraft. But if the studios that did that are unable to fund that movie because, you know, they have to focus on something else or whatever, we're never going to get that. And I, it's, it's, I realize that's kind of like a, one of those Jungian mindset type things where I'm iffy on either side here. But my concern is, again, how much longer can this shit keep up? Like, that's the, the one takeaway that I have. From Infinity War coming out. Like, I mean, everyone's had it about Justice League, but then in Infinity War, all of a sudden it's a much larger movie. It's gonna be there's gonna be much more money spent on that. And in between that, we're getting um Guardians 3, I think, is coming out in, in, in between that. Uh let's see, um uh Black Panther. God damn, I, 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 I forget everything that Marvel's got lined up to come out between that. Uh Doctor Strange 2, Deadpool 2, a, b a bunch of stuff that's scheduled to come out. And it just kind of makes me wonder, again, how much longer can this be maintained? Well. And, like, like, the, 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 the reason it bothers me, the, the legitimate reason it bothers me, is because within my own lifetime, I, you know, I, I, I'm, this is gonna make me sound like a hipster, I'm sorry, but, um, years ago, um, uh, when I was younger, I liked comic books, I liked, you know, superheroes and stuff like that, and not everyone did. So, within the time that I was a little kid, up until now, it's gone from where it was, you know, just a thing that only nerds like, to where it's mainstream and everyone likes it, and, like, my issue is... How much longer is it going to take until that bubble collapse? I mean, it's, it's, it is a bubble. It's, it, it's, it's like an economic bubble or a housing bubble or, any, or anything else. But how much longer until that bubble collapses and it goes back to not being a mainstream thing and everyone who likes it is viewed as a loser? It goes that far. I, I, I think it will be a very long time before... Uh, nerdy things with being a loser again. Um, get back to your point. Um, this is one of the main complaints that I have against these. It's the way that they did their movies, um, they blew their load early. Uh, the death of Superman. Um, if the rumors are true, evil Superman, Batman versus Superman fight. Um, I I don't know what they're going to build up to after this. They I they've already got Dark Side. I, I mean, I guess the lead up is to Dark Side, but even that, the, I don't know what they follow up with. Um, the, the same thing can be said about Marvel, but they've been doing this for years now. They've had plenty of time to build up to, uh, Thanos. And I'm hoping they have a plan for something similar after Infinity Wars. We'll have to wait and see, obviously. But see, that's another concern. Who else, and or what else in the Marvel Universe is the big bad guy, uh, if not Thanos. I mean, he's... I could kind of see Galactus, maybe? Well, yeah, Galactus, obviously, but let's not forget, Galactus has already been in film. Remember the Silver Surfer movie? Yeah, I, I know, but... Uh, there's a few other people that Marvel could go to, um... I think his bad guy has always been Darkseid. I, I, 
I don't know what they will do after Dark Side. I they could do Brainiac, maybe I I don't know. It's like it's it's kind of iffy, you know. Because I mean, you realize, okay, we're gonna do all this lead up to one of the biggest bad guys in comic history, and then are we gonna take him out? Uh, is he gonna become a good guy? What's, what's gonna happen? I mean, it's 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 an actual concern, and that's and you know going back to DC for a second. That's my concern with DC. Because in a grand total of one movie, they already did half of the most popular storylines, and we're for sure getting the other half of the popular storylines in the second movie, and they've got shit planned after that. And that's why I think, you know, movies like Wonder Woman are such a legitimate breath of fresh air, because even if they make shit up, for certain characters, like they did with Wonder Woman, because uh, no, it's not. Let me rephrase that. It's not entirely made up, but it's kind of tweaked. But like, e e even if they do something like that, you know, it's it's still got to play into their overall universe that they're trying to build. That they're three, four movies in, you know, and it's terrible. Actually, I I think they did the wrong storyline. Honestly, for Justice League, I think they should have done the War of the Rings. I think that would have played much better into the darker universe. Much better into uh, okay. bringing, bringing the heroes together. Okay, like, I know we've discussed this before. And it's probably going to come up again. But, and this is going to be like the last big point I have to make. Uh, I would like, or really would have liked the DC to have taken these stories. And, okay, you had the Superman movie. Let's say you had the Batman movie. You know, I, I, And I, I, I don't want the backstory thing for Batman, but we're going to get it every fucking time because it's like it, it, it's like superman's planet being destroyed you know y you have to have the reminder there it's it's, it's like it's it, it, the weird thing is dc like dc is really bad about doing the backstory thing re re referencing backstory i mean uh and marvel in the mcu has really only done that a couple times it's consistently with wolverine I'm so tired of Wolverine. I'm glad he's dead. But anyway, um, oh, that's right. That's right. That was what I was trying to think of. That's what I was trying to think of. Guess who shows up in the movie? Hey, Wolverine? Yeah, Hugh motherfucker. I didn't see Jack that. Shows up. Yeah. Yeah, I, you Logan know what? I, the last time. Yeah, so I've just kind of spoiled the movie. But yeah, he's in the trailer. I don't, I don't care. That, I, I don't care how. I don't care why. I'm, I'm just excited now. Don't get me wrong. I, I, I am still excited. But we're gonna have to deal with you know him being an asshole to people for a, at least one more movie, and it's, I just. I don't care in this one instance, in this one single instance, I will forgive anything if they can bring, if they can start to bring the X-Men over into these things, well, it's just not doing it for Deadpool. me. Like, they already did a movie within the MCU with an X-Men, two X-Men. Three, whatever. Anyway, technically, it wasn't in the MCU. It's still, it's still no, Fox. I no, think. No, no, sir. It's the MCU. It, 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 it is considered to be part of everything else. Because if I'm not mistaken, he is in Infinity War, which is weird that Disney would do that. But whatever. <sighs> anyway, what I was gonna say is, um, as much as I dislike, you know, like the origin story type thing, for certain characters, I realize it's important to have them in there. And that's why I think DC should have done the right thing and have made a Batman movie out of Dawn of Justice. 
because as awesome as it is to have the pre-established Batman, and we've both said countless times that that's a great thing, they should have had a standalone Batman movie. You know, like something, like uh, like seeing him do all the Batman shit he does in the movie, because it, it, it's a, let's be honest, it's a Batman movie. You know, like why not have that be a separate thing to where you see Batman is basically trying to figure out who Clark Kent is and like, oh, Superman is really, really, you know, and he kind of does the Batman thing while picking that up. And then you could draw in, you know, you know, like him, like him having the nightmares and everything else. That would be cool. I'd be okay with that. I could work with that. Just separate it to where, you know, you have, you know, that come in. And then, oh, well, look, here's, you know, Wonder Woman shows up at some point in time. I'm, I'm cool with Wonder Woman showing up. Like, I'm, I'm fine with that, because you have to enter, or, or better yet, leave her the fuck out of it, you know, have the, like, have the follow-up movie be, you know, where Batman and Superman have to fight, like, they actually have to fight, just do The Dark Knight Returns as a movie where they actually fight, and I'm okay with that, and at the end of it, Wonder Woman shows up, oh, now we're going to introduce Wonder Woman, now we get Wonder Woman's backstory, now we know how she fits in. And then you start building the universe up that way. DC, copy Marvel for once. Like the right version of copying Marvel. Whatever. Wait, 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 wait. So you're saying that after all of these years, original argument, you're actually going to agree with what I said? From the start. The thing is, I've agreed with you all along. I, like, I, and I said it before. DC, like, like the first time we even discussed this on the show, like, I think that was like episode two or three, whatever, I don't remember what it was, anyway, DC should have taken the time to split this shit up and make more movies. It really no. should have been done that way. Because look at what Marvel's done in the time that they have made these great movies they've done. They've also been producing TV series. And, watch and the that TV show. series are, are, are companions to what you see in the movie, like there's things that happen in the movies that you don't like, like you don't understand unless oh, it's in a TV show, and like they continually reference one another, and they've literally built up their own universe around the concept. And it's great, and it's wonderful, and DC should have done that, except DC's not, and like that's still the old, like the strongest thing DC had is is it is, is telling these stories, and that's what DC is doing. They're telling the stories, but the way that they're doing it to build this cinematic universe is terrible. It's terrible. DC could have done a better job, and I'm disappointed that they're not. That they didn't, rather. I, I feel so victorious right now. Shut up. That's... Anyway, I, I, I think that's going to be it for today. Even though there's so much more to go over from Comic-Con. There's so very much more to go over from Comic-Con. There was a lot of stuff that happened. Like, you know what? You know what? We'll save it for, we'll save it for Friday. Like we'll, like, we'll have Friday be like an echo of today. Because th th there was some shit that happened at Comic-Con I, I, I would like to talk about at some point in time. But we'll, we'll, we'll just talk. We'll... we'll We'll get to that later, I think. That sounds like a plan. It's always a plan. Time for the plan. But anyway, yeah. Please remember to like this video, comment on it, share it, subscribe to our YouTube channel, like us on Facebook, go to our Patreon, give us your money, uh, tweet at me, and again, for whatever reason, if you are if you are so inclined, please go to our Twitch channel, even though we never upload anything in there. By the way, Nick, by the way, Nick, speaking of Twitch and speaking of YouTube and Facebook and everything else. Yeah. Since we are coming up on our 100th episode, I challenge you to the Hearthstone Match of the Century of the Week, Volume 2. So I'm going to destroy you again. No, no. This time. This time it will be different. This time there will be more corn. I to beat you so badly. A and B hell reference for from the all who don't know that. Yeah. This time, things will be different. I promise, it will be different.
Also, oh, yeah, speaking of video game stuff, um, Nick, do you remember how I kept threatening to get on World of Warcraft and go to Goldshire on Moonguard and record uh, what people have in their 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 their, their, their role playing add ons? Yeah, I did it. Yeah, <laughs> so uh, <laughs> that's gonna be on the channel soon. And I gotta warn y'all, it's it's graphic. It's really graphic. Anyway, <laughs> can we even show that? Yes, yes, we can, and we are go we are going to, we're going to. So yeah, that's that's coming up. Oh, <sighs> we need to like blur out all the words. No, no, because I actually read some of this, some of the shit people write. I or wrote rather. I, 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 I read it, and I, I, I didn't censor anything. I'm yeah. really scared. You should be like you actually should be scared, but that's fine. That's why people watch us or listen to us rather, because we we talk about cool shit. So yeah, Hearthstone Match of the Century of the Week Volume Two. Uh, more corn is coming up at some point in time, and then probably by the end of the day today or tomorrow, whatever, I will have the video up of me walking around Goldshire on Moongarden. Sounds like a plan. It is a plan. Talk to y'all soon, everybody. Bye-bye.